Thank you. And uh, I was at this very interesting session this morning where you tied the political economy and basically learned how tax evasion like, uh, is one of the main drivers of illicit finance or lacking transparency is one of the big problems in, in development going forward. And um, we have now learned a lot about CRS, the amazing increase in automatic exchange agreements that I wouldn't have dared believing would happen when I started working on this like 10, 15 years ago. Impressive numbers of data going back and forth. There is some issues about these data not being available for analysis or checking for outsiders. I won't take you up on that now, Ansela. Let's do it later. And we have seen how this has also affected uh, compliance in South Africa and Argentina and, very, like, and how this can be a new measure for tax uh, enforcement. So it's all very uh, enf encouraging and positive. Uh, so let me give you some cold water in the head and go to the, one of the challenges. Because as we all know, if you try to close one door, shut one door, there will always be somebody opening another. And one major issue with the CRS uh, automatic exchange is that it only covers financial assets. And there is indication from like around the world, growing indication that, that um, evaders are moving assets into other types of uh, class, asset classes that aren't included. Um, there is growing evidence now from London, for instance, several studies, including Jakob and Niels, showing uh, extensive foreign ownership, and also by Bomara and, and uh, um, Ari, uh, showing that what appears to be foreign owners are, exact, are actually UK citizens owning through like legal secrecy jurisdictions offshore, offshore. So it's not just owners, or foreigners, but could also be citizens hiding national uh, assets for the tax authorities. So, but the main problem here is data. Like how do we get at um, estimating the extent of this in real assets? Like how much is like flowing into the, the real assets and how much is foreknown? And then we are uh, had, I'm going to show you evidence from a very unique um, collaboration with journalists and NGOs and tax administrations and researchers. We had the opportunity to, to do analysis and merge data and do things that the tax authorities nationally alone cannot do. Um, and we had, um, this is joint with Brilvi uh, Pantros, Gabo Sukman, Andreas Öklan, who is there. So if you have any technical, very difficult questions, ask him and not me, please. This was, uh, we worked very long on this. It was, um, for the first time, we got a peek into the offshore world of real estate. So we got access to all owners, like of more than 800,000 properties in Dubai, which is a major offshore jurisdiction. It's very easily regulated. It's relatively easy for foreigners to buy properties. Um, Dubai is part of the CRS, so by that definition, not a tax haven, but property registers are not public. So, and there's also, um, uh, yeah. So this was uh, data that was uh, leaked to, and it's very important to say we had nothing to do with the leak. Uh, we used data after the leak was done uh, to a uh, uh, US think tank, C4 Ads, who then collaborated with researchers uh, at Skattefos, Center for Tax Research and um, EU Tax Observatory, and journalists uh, in 25 newsrooms around the world. There was coordinated analysis and um, and there was a coordinated launch uh, in May in 2022. So it was a very interesting experience to be part of. Um, so the, the data is was handed over to C4Ads, uh, who shared it with the researchers and and um, and journalists. We did researchers. Very important to say, we did not work on names. What we did was analyze trends and patterns overall, and then journalists went into the single cases, which we did not have anything to do with. We made these overall estimates, that the numbers to put it on the, and headlines, give, give like a background analysis for journalists to, to put into their stories and then going into that. And uh, as researchers, we did the evaluation of, of the value of the properties because it's very detailed information on the property characteristics, and we could merge that with public information on property transactions by region in Dubai. So we could use that information. There was no names there. Um, yes. How can we trust 
aggregate, like leak data. Like how we can say, we give you some leak, we can't show you the data, but you have to take our word for it, that is proper, right? So we have, like, we have very good faith that this is, uh, these are accurate and good data. So for instance, for C4 Ads has been worked on uh, analyzing Dubai property market for several years in, in case studies. This is all and, and collaborated data. Uh, investigated journalists in this network, but also by, by New York Times and other uh, big newsroom have used these uh, data for like on sing single cases. And what the journalists say is that when they confront interview objects and saying, okay, you have a property here, why do you have that? Like this is the value of it. The, 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 the ownership or the value is usually not, is not questioned. So that's, we take that, like all these anecdotes, as a case of that this is also accuracy. And we have also compared the information um, by public uh, property numbers and, and structures in Dubai. So let me give you to the big question. Who owns state, like properties in Dubai then? Like, where is it distributed? Um, so when we did this, there was a lot of uh, nationality information, but like, of course, it's not, like, it's not properly, so you have to do all of imputation. I won't go into that uh, here, you can see it in the paper. But what we see is that owners, that the main conclusion is that owners, uh, foreign owners don't seem to be resident. So if we look at here, we have um, the share of, of owners in, in Dubai of properties at, at the x-axis, and then we see um, like how it corresponds to the share of migrants living in Dubai at the, at the y-axis. And we see that there is, um, Many uh, of the richer countries, like the, there, there's a much larger share of owners than there is like residents. Um, one one outlier here, which doesn't fit in the graph, is India, because they have a lot of like 51 percent of the immigrants, like mainly guest laborers, um, and they have 12 percent of the foreign owners. So there's a big rental market in Dubai, so it's easy to to rent it out. So many can also use it as investment. So if you want to hide assets, you don't want to have it there, you can also rent it out and make money from it, and no questions asked. Uh, we find that offshore real estate in Dubai is large. It's 27% of the total value of all uh, real estate in Dubai. And this is even an underestimate, we assume, because we find that um, there's a lot of corporate ownership, which is kind of can hide uh, as we do uh, it as UA. And there's also, if you see this, this light blue one, uh, on, uh, properties we couldn't identify the owners of. And these values is also what the journalists say. This is from 2020. Um, these values have increased uh, over time. So when the journalists now use the data, they basically inflate the numbers because they see that there's an increase in the values over time. What we see at the contra distributions, this is the, like the basically the, the numbers, um, uh, uh, billions of dollars owned by properties owned by different country citizens in Dubai. And there's a caveat. We don't know if people are tax residents in these countries. We know they have nationals. So of course, there's a caveat there. Um, so India is basically the biggest number, but let's also say there's a lot of guest, guest workers there in UK. And, and if we see here, there's like a lot of like closeness and uh, in geographical proximity and historical ties with UK, or big historical ties with Dubai, for instance. Um, and I also say, I guess we saw in, in Argentina, that, uh, that it seems like to be a regional effect, like the Argentinians use uh, US and, and tax havens or like countries close to them. And that's what we see also here. This is illustrating the, the, the gravity effect. So basically you invest close to home. That's what we have been seeing in paper with Nielsen Gabriel earlier on financial assets in Switzerland is basically you go to a tax haven that's easier and closer to home. So that's kind of a, a, a gravity effect in hidden wealth that we can see all over like different sources on different assets. Yeah, so the darker blue, so this is basically illustrates the, the investments in Dubai as a percentage of the like, different countries' GDP. And the, the darker blue, the more, like, more concentrated investments there is. So that's kind of just an illustration. You have it online as well. If we take, like, take this, like, see, okay, how, how does it fare, like how big are investments relative to to, to how rich a country is. So like take the, the Dubai properties and, and, and take it divided by a GDP. And then we see um, top countries are like Jordan, Afghanistan, Syria, Palestine, so in Yemen. Um, so we see the highest <laughs> concentration of ownership like relative to how rich the country is, is in autocratic and neighboring countries. And it is important to take into account it's not just taxes that make you invest in tax havens, as we've been talking about. Like you have all kind of 
corruption and money laundering and all the kind of illicit finance things, but there are also very legit uh, like reasons for for wanting to invest abroad. Like you see in Lebanon, when the bank system crashed and people lost all their money, right? So in, in like if there is social unrest and inflation, you want to secure your money. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but but that we want to see also that what we do is then see can can we get a bit closer to like where are the the, the top like the the plutocrats so like how is the concentration in Dubai? and we look at when we zoom in on the richer areas the country distribution changes a bit so the the rich areas where properties we see the most notably is like the blue one is like how um, the top countries like just in the amounts and all of Dubai and the red bars are those in the rich countries and we see that notably the, the Indians are less important, indicating that these are like people working there, like less expensive areas. And notably, Russia is, uh, is increasing. And this is just a road mode that this is before the invasion of Ukraine, where all the sanctions uh, took in place. Uh, yeah. Are these assets hidden? Like, are they reported at home? Like, um, we have discussed this earlier today. Also, like, what what do the what do they disclose uh, at home? Uh, we saw in South Africa there's a very lo low disclosure area. How do we get at that at all? Well, then, thank God for the for the wealth tax. Like in Norway, that's a very controversial tax, but that gives us people have to report their assets, their wealth by class and ownership by, if you have real estate by country. And we also have really good wealth data. So you can actually rank people by their wealth. And like, we don't have to go by income, but by their wealth. And seeing that, we see we just rank people by wealth and seeing, okay, there's a higher propensity to own um, uh, offshore like, properties in Dubai in, in, uh, as the wealth increases. And these are like all owners. When we look at is it reported, 70% of the properties were unreported and 75% of the values were unreported, like as with estimates. This is also likely an overestimate of the reporting because of some technicalities. Key takeaways, offshore real estate is large. Uh, our results indicate a major shortcoming of the CRS. Uh, CRS needs to be extended to real estate so you can't have a safe haven to hide. But very importantly, it isn't enough to know where assets are held. You also need to get, get that asset, so that tax revenue, which is like what the developing countries are stating, or like with the CRS and everything. Well, it doesn't help us to know that they're like people have hidden assets in a bank somewhere. We need to get the revenue back. And that needs to be the next step. Like information is super important, but you also need to have get money, get money back, revenue mobilization, which is the next step. But to get that, we need information. As we talked about uh, earlier today, Gerard from um, ICRJ says, like, change can happen, but it has to be driven from below because the, the, the citizens have to demand change. And what the first step is to know about that things are unjust. And what we learned is through this Dubai and, 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 and working with the journalist is that it, it gets headlines. If you ask number, and, and this is like a transparent number, you get real headlines and you give like uh, journalists and countries uh, a, a ability to make the governments accountable. Because if you have numbers to start and where you can start looking. And this, and this was one of the main motivations for our big new collaboration with NORAD, uh, because we do all this research. We have all these papers. We have these different papers and different numbers. We researchers may know how to look for the numbers in some appendices or somewhere, but how can you make these numbers accessible in a transparent and credible and good and coherent way over time to NGOs, civil society, policymakers, tax administrations, like how can South Africa have an idea of how much uh, real estate is hidden around the world? So that's basically the main, one of the main, one of the main, uh, two main purposes of this big project we have with NORAD, making the numbers accessible to facilitate change. And the next step is on global estimates. So we have a big launch now on October 23 in Paris and 25 in Stavanger. We are launching a big international, the Atlas of the Offshore World. We are going to have transparent estimates and by country by country, not only like the rich countries, but like all countries, there are like any available data for, and it's particular emphasis on data for, for developing countries. 
with four data series, so which are like we are computing them and updating and making transparent. We even have a hotline with a video talk and go and chat to get help to use them to get information. We have informat infographics, it's going to be super cool and super helpful, I hope. Uh, and then it's going to feed before data series effective tax rates on capital and labor income over time, country by country. Um, global profit shifting uh, by, by, by multinationals, by country by country, and over time, updated all the time, and, and series on country by country, by an offshore financial wealth and offshore real estate wealth. So stay tuned, and thank you.